Tom Wynn Godbold, founder of B-Sharp and the International Academy of B-Sharp Teachers. And you're watching B-Sharp Teacher TV. This is the place teachers come when they want to train sharp, when they want to be inspired to teach sharp, and most importantly, empowered to be sharp. Let's get into today's episode and see what's on tap for your six minute Sunday. Hey everybody, welcome back to B Sharp Teachers TV. You know that everything we do at B Sharp Teachers TV, at B Sharp, and in the International Academy of B Sharp Teachers, everything we do is centered around our mission to inspire and empower you to teach with authenticity, joy, and loads of success. And so this week we're going to actually talk about, I'm going to give you a few things to think about with your teaching so that you can be more successful. And let's face it, you are the most successful when your kids are successful. So let me help you out just a minute. We're going to talk today about kind of under the heading of differentiated instruction. That's a big term that we use and lots of things can feed into differentiated instruction. But for today, we are actually going to talk about in the area of mathematics, and kind of a subgroup of your children, okay? And very often we think about English language learners as the kids who will need the tip that I'm gonna give you today. But I am here to tell you that I want to expand your vision of the English language learner if you are a teacher of grades pre-K through six. So any of my elementary teachers and also that first year middle school teacher, I want you to be thinking about this. Even if you don't have an identified English language learner in your classroom, at that age group, that pre-K to six age group, every child is an English math language learner. And I'm gonna give you some examples today of why, and I'm going to share with you why this is really important for you. So the first thing we'll do is start out with an example because I really believe this is the best way for you to really grab a hold of what I'm giving you today. So I'm gonna just turn this over and share with you. I've got my handy dandy number chart right here. And so on this numbers chart I have for us the numbers of course 1 to 100. Stand up there chart. Okay. Alright, it's fighting with me but that's okay. We can make this work. So here's our numbers chart 1 to 100 and very often you'll get up and you'll be modeling with your children and you'll say to them, look boys and girls the numbers get higher and higher and higher on the number grid. Now think about what I'm doing folks. I'm talking to you about numbers that are getting higher and I am very clearly modeling for you, physically modeling, my hand is going lower and lower and lower on the number grid. So while you're saying to children, these numbers are getting higher and you're speaking of their value, your kids are actually sitting there thinking, the lady's crazy. She doesn't know what she's talking about because they don't know you're talking value. So even something just as simple as this and something we would do, you know, I'm, you probably can think back to a hundred times you've already done this if you've been teaching for more than three days. You come over and go, the numbers get higher on the number grid and you just model going down. So what you want to do is be thoughtful of that because you're, you know, in your classroom, those kids don't know you're talking value. So you say, boys and girls, as I point on the number grid and my hand is moving lower and lower and lower on the number grid, the way that we talk about these numbers and their value is actually getting, and then you see if they can tell you that it's actually getting higher. And then you do some modeling with your base 10 blocks to show it's, you know, one long and five cubes is 15, but in order to get to the 25, we'd have to have two longs and five cubes. So you really go through that and break it down so they understand you're modeling and talking the same thing, even though they sound contradictory. Now, a couple other things I'll tell you. For instance, the word right. If you're going to use the word right in mathematics, that's great. The answer might be right. Or you might have a right angle. Well, what if a right angle is the wrong answer? Do you see the confusion there? Because there are many, you know, there are synonyms for the word right, you've got, or not synonyms, excuse me, homophones for the word right, you've got to explain what you're talking about because I can write with a pencil and paper, I can be right as in correct, or I could have a right angle, which is a 90 degree angle. Or I could be turning to the right instead of to the left. So you see, you really have to be careful about that. Oh, and look what I just did. I modeled for you, I said I could be turning to the right, and if you're watching me, you actually saw me pointing to the left. 
It's another way that the word right can get children confused, even if they're not English language learners. They just need to really have all of that language explained to them. One last example, and that would be when you're speaking about fractions. Now, it's not just that these are the only three times this problem comes up in your life or in your teaching career, but these are three that will really give you a sense of the issue. So when you're teaching fractions, you, um, you, know, you might be talking about the whole. I was with some teachers in Tampa, and they shared with me that they had been talking about the whole, talking about the whole, and parts of the whole whenever they were explaining the fractions. And that after quite some time of instruction, one of the, actually the brightest children in the room said, can you just show me where the hole is? I've been looking and I can't find it. And she was thinking about an H-O-L-E, not the W-H-O-L-E, which is what her teacher had been talking about. So I'll just encourage you under the big umbrella of differentiated instruction to be thinking about that subgroup of English language learners but to be thinking about them in pre-K to six as if every single child in your room fell into that subgroup because truly they all do as English math language learners. And from our three examples today, I bet you have tons of examples of how this has happened to you. Or after you get aware of it, you might begin to have tons of examples. So what I would love for you to do is to share right under this video if you have any of these other sort of language difficulties that have come up in your classroom, the whole for the whole or right for right or going down the number grid and really be getting higher and higher, if you've experienced any of those or any of your own, please, in the comments below, let us all know about it. Because listen, we're only going to get stronger the more we work together, right? Okay, so there's something to think about on this Sunday. I hope you guys have a super awesome week this coming week, and I'll see you next week right here on B Sharp TV. Be sure to leave a comment, and please share us with your friends and invite them over to the International Academy of B Sharp Teachers. It's all free, folks, and so I want you to be a part of that. Okay, check us out at bsharp.com.